Hi, and welcome to my Heart Your Head podcast. I'm Annika. And I'm Kaika. And today we'll be discussing personality tests. Okay, so today we're discussing personality tests, which both of us, we really enjoy doing these. Um, some of them, I would say, are more accurate than others, but we've combined four that I would say are quite insightful. So let's start with the first one, which I would say for us is probably the most comprehensive one, like the best one that actually gives some kind of proper analysis on the the types and it's not just like okay these are your strengths or weaknesses so with the two first ones those are like you get the like a certain type and then the two other ones they don't give you a certain type they just give some characteristics that fit your personality so the first test that we have on the list that's uh, i would say our favorite and it is the 16 personalities or the Myers-Briggs type indicator or MBTI and you might have seen for example on Tinder people have these four letters in their bio like ENTP ISFJ and you might be like oh what is this? So this is what it is. And to be honest, I really appreciate having this information because it's it can be quite um, interesting <laughs> and relevant, like when you are choosing a partner. And I was first introduced to this test by my brother who was doing some psychology courses. And then he was telling me about this test and he mentioned that it is better to do the English version of the test for some reason, because there are a lot of translated versions. Um, and I fully agree with this one. So if you want to do this test, I would go for the English one. Obviously, if you're listening to us, you probably understand English well enough. <laughs> Um, because for me, the Finnish version, it gave me, I think I had like, it was half the same as it was with the English one. And the English one definitely fits me better. So that's good to know. Okay, so what do the letters actually mean? So there are five different dimensions to this. And the first four aspects are kind of the main ones. And then the fifth one it is, I guess, kind of useful, but people don't really care about that one, I would say. So the first one is your mind. So how we interact with our surroundings and the two different dimensions here are introvert. So you prefer solitary activities and you're sensitive to external stimuli, so like sound and so on. And then we have the extroverted ones who are like more enthusiastic and they prefer group activities and I think that this point is quite easy to understand. And then the second one is energy, so how we see the world and process information. And here we have the observant ones, which are the more practical people with a strong emphasis on their habits. And then we have the intuitive ones who are more imaginative and focus on future possibilities. And then the third one is nature, so how we make decisions and cope with our emotions, which I think, again, is very easy to understand because we have the thinking types, which are all about objectivity and logic and efficiency. And then we have the feeling types, which are more sensitive and expressive and put more focus on cooperation. And then the fourth one is tactics. So how we approach work and planning and decision making. So we have the judging types, which are more decisive and organized and value structure. And then we have the prospecting types who are more flexible, relaxed and are okay with improvising. <laughs> it's just funny, like probably you kind of have some some kind of clue on what your type could be based on these, these descriptions already. 
And then we have the fifth one, which is about uh, our identity. So how confident we are in our abilities and our decisions. Here we have the assertive ones who are more self-assured and resistant to stress and just they are not worrying that much. And then we have the turbulent ones who are more self-conscious, sensitive to stress and more success driven as well. So let's discuss our types. So tell us what is your type. Okay, so my type is ISFP. The adventurer, which I guess it kind of makes sense and is a very good name. I'm happy also that it's not like the artist because based on the description, it's like we are the artistic types. So the ISFPs are introverted, observant, feeling and prospecting. And I feel like it does already describe me quite well, but what really is the the best part about this test is that it actually gives you a very nice analysis and like I've heard many people say like I feel understood. So let me tell you what the website says about the ISFPs, which is that they tend to have open minds, approaching life, new experiences and people with grounded warmth. Their ability to stay in the moment helps them uncover exciting potentials. And I really felt this quote that they have on the website, which is by Bob Dylan, and it goes like this. I change during the course of a day. I wake and I'm one person, and when I go to sleep, I know for certain that I'm somebody else. And I just love all sorts of makeovers, <laughs> like whether that's uh, to do with your inner life or even if I'm watching like America's Next Top Model, the makeover episode is always the best one. <laughs> <laughs> and adventurers are not really too traditional at all and we strongly value our independence and our uniqueness and our individuality. So apparently the biggest challenge facing adventurers is planning for the future, which to be honest, I really enjoy kind of organizing my life. But if I think about it, it more has to do with the fact that when I write my schedule in my agenda, I like making it look pretty. So yeah, and also having some kind of a structure, it does give me a sense of freedom because then within those frames... I can then do whatever I want. And also adventurers are sensitive to others' feelings and enjoy harmony, which will come up in other um, personality tests as well. <laughs> and a few famous ISFPs include a Britney bitch, Michael Jackson, Jessica Alba, and then I thought that this one was quite interesting. Uh, they also say that Eowyn from The Lord of the Rings that she's an ISFP, which she's kind of my favorite character probably after Legolas. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. And then some adventurer strengths, supposedly. Okay, it's kind of weird to say your strengths out loud, I guess. Doesn't really matter what kind of personality type you are, or maybe, I don't know, I haven't done super much research on other types, but at least for me, it's a bit weird to like, say, okay, these are my strengths. So. Well, I, I feel like it might be connected to your personality type, because for me, I can talk about my strengths all day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, interesting. <laughs> So um, my strengths are uh, that I am charming, so kind of like easy to be around with. I think that that has to do also with the fact that we are very much like live and let live and we are not trying to force our opinions to other people and like we are adapting to different situations. And then we're sensitive to others, which also kind of ties into this one. Like it's, um, for example, things like reading the vibe in the room. That's kind of important to us. And then we are imaginative, which I guess, yeah, I used to write some stories of my own when I was a kid. <laughs> also passionate which I can definitely see in a sense that it's very easy for me to be 
excited about something that for example this podcast like when we started I was like oh like just thinking about it day and night and like yeah so excited <laughs> and then also we are curious yeah I like to learn and <laughs> explore go on adventures <laughs> And then also artistic. And this is something that, for example, if I'm watching some YouTube videos on the 16 personalities, there's quite often the the thing about ISFPs is something like, if something happens, we will like write a song about it, which is, I would say, not always the case with me. Of course, I appreciate the arts a lot. I do like to paint and get creative, but I wouldn't say that I'm the type who will write you a love song <laughs> no oh <laughs> i can try <laughs> maybe one day <laughs> yes and then weaknesses which i feel like it's easier to agree with these ones <laughs> so as isfps we are fiercely independent which to be honest i don't even consider as a weakness i'm very proud of it <laughs> But I can see how this is one of those reasons that has caused the majority of any relationship-related issues in the past. And I, by relationship, I mainly mean my family relations. For me, it has always been super important to have my own space, both physically and socially, but especially physically when you live with someone else like for me to have my own stuff and like my own place for my stuff and like if someone comes in and moves my stuff that's not okay for example when we had this cleaning lady clean the house I was always saying like can you please just like vacuum and like mop and so on but please for heaven's sake do not touch my stuff do not rearrange my stuff and she just never got it and like yeah Oh my god, I'm getting really annoyed just <laughs> I by see your, about it. You, yeah, I see. <laughs> okay, moving on. So, <laughs> the second weakness is that we are unpredictable, which I guess has to do with the fact that it's easy to like get excited like that about something and you don't really know like what's going to happen next. <laughs> and then easily stressed, which, uh, yeah, I can kind of see it maybe at the people cannot always see it and it's it can be easy for me to try to control it but like for example the more tired I am the easier it is for this to show and then overly competitive which isn't something that you would when you hear this description of ISFP that you would really attach to the type but I can definitely definitely see this in myself and this is something that is for sure decreasing as I'm getting older but when I was younger I was really competitive sometimes and in what sense like in what situations give me an example <laughs> for example playing board games or oh okay. um, at school for sure especially in those um, subjects where I was kind of good at mm -hmm. it was it really brings me so much joy to see that I'm doing better than my peers because uh, I personally wouldn't say you are overly competitive but it might be just because the only games we ever played were drinking games where you <laughs> don't want to really win so <laughs> <laughs> True, but I would say that even with those drinking games, like you and me, we were quite uh, on the same level quite often. So for <laughs> me, that was <laughs> that was fine. But to be honest, even when it comes to drinking games, like Never Have I Ever, for example, I do like it when I've done, and this comes with the kind of wanting to be unique aspect of an ISFP. Oh. Like I really enjoyed it when I got to drink. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, I've done this and kind of, maybe also shocking other people mm -hmm. like I'm not just what you see but okay so much more okay interesting yeah <laughs> and then the last weakness is fluctuating self-esteem which I can totally see this one as well like I have those days when I feel like super on fleek like just on top of the world but then it's very easy for it to like also kind of come down and um, affect my mood a lot 
So then when it comes to relationships, um, adventurers uh, really can focus on their partners a lot and like what the partner wants to do and we don't really have that much interest in dictating the situation, <laughs> which it also applies to other other situations, definitely. And then something that is kind of important to know, especially if you are my partner, is that if ISFPs feel appreciated, then we are more than happy to reciprocate in any way we know how. And I guess you can use your imagination <laughs> with the <one. laughs> Yeah, there's quite some stuff. But with your type, there wasn't anything about this this kind of stuff, right? Mm, no, no, I feel no. Like we were trying to look for it, but there was nothing. Yeah, no, my personality type obviously doesn't <laughs> Does seem not to even. In this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm, and then when it comes to friendships. Uh, when they are with friends they trust, adventurers know how to relax, shedding rules, traditions, and expectations in favor of just enjoying themselves. Do you agree as a friend of mine? Would you say that this is? Uh, yes, this is definitely true. Uh, the only thing that comes uh, into my mind, uh, like connected to our friendship, would be one of your weaknesses, which is the unpredictable part. Mm -hmm. Because for me, as someone who likes to plan and likes to know what we are going to do, it's it took me a lot of adjusting to get used to you just changing plans all the time because you feel that way. <laughs> that's that. for me. <laughs> that's for me something like which I really had to make sure I will not get annoyed by. But actually, I took it as a opportunity to learn from you that the plans can change and it's okay and so yeah for me it was a positive impact on yeah, me yeah i don't really for me maybe it's so i'm sorry like there's a butterfly that's been there for the past five minutes and i don't know what it's doing like it's very big and it's like, like maybe it's trying there, to honey? rob your house or something Yeah, it could be. It's like it's it has this thingy between like coming from its mouth and I guess it's like eating or something. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting because I don't even think about it. Uh, yeah, because the first thing is that you don't actually have the plans, basically. So you are not changing the plans. You are just changing <laughs> my internal plans in my head. But uh, that's my problem, <laughs> mainly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But it's it's more about like you don't necessarily have a strict routine for every day. And mm -hmm. that was something which is kind of hard for me because I don't know what to expect. Like when we are going for brunch, when we are going to shop, what, what we are doing, what's happening today. Yeah. And I had to definitely adjust. Yeah. But it's probably more of my problem than yours. Yeah, no. And I understand it because also I, I would really hate to disappoint someone so that's also one of the reasons why I like to kind of keep the plans a bit open so that if I say like okay let's meet up at 10 o'clock and then I'm like well yeah I cannot be ready at 10 like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah okay yeah but in, yeah but in general I have to say like you are a really nice person to be around like you just kind of produce this like calm relaxed energy which is really nice just to even like being quiet with you it feels really relaxing for me yeah. So. <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah sometimes for me it depends on who I'm with but it can be very awkward to have a silence but then if it's someone that I'm comfortable with then anything is fine so as a conclusion Few personality types are as colorful and charming as adventurers. Known for their kindness and artistic skills, adventurers are great at finding exciting new things to explore and experience. Adventurers' creativity and down-to-earth attitude are invaluable in many areas, including their own personal growth. I like that. It's nice. The only thing that, yeah, like I mentioned, the whole artistic thing, it's a little not as emphasized in my character. Um, and then also, I remember there was a mention that 
adventurers can get like really into gambling and extreme sports and that is something that's a huge no-no for me I don't enjoy that kind of risky behavior at all and for me even just thinking about like the stock market it gives me anxiety (laughs) because the fluctuation (laughs) and the risk and all of that so (laughs) okay so now that we know more about me how about you what is your personality type Okay, so my personality type, according to this test, is INTJ, uh, which is the architect. And basically, compared to your uh, type, the only thing we have in common is the I, so we are both introverted. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And after that, the letters stand for intuitive thinking and judging. So basically mostly the opposite of you. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Which I have to say is very much accurate. (laughs) So I will just also go through some points I've uh, taken from the description of the personality and share my own thoughts (laughs) about them. So the first one I wrote down is that these thoughtful tacticians love perfecting the details of life, applying creativity and rationality to everything they do. I would take the emphasis to (laughs) perfecting the details. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's something which I strongly relate to. And in some cases it can be good, but in some cases it just takes a lot of time and it's really unnecessary so I'm trying to definitely work with this one um the next thing I wrote down is that their inner world is often a private and complex one which is absolutely true uh for me it's I would say even really difficult to talk about my own feelings I can talk about myself but not necessarily how I feel Mm -hmm. it's kind of difficult for me to share with other people but that doesn't mean that I don't feel anything (laughs) uh I would say that my inner world is quite complex and big and I spend a lot of time with my own thoughts I just don't like to share them with anyone but I mean that's a real shame because you know you are such an interesting person so we would love to know more (laughs) but not everyone has to know Uh, I have to have my secret but no uh, I'm trying to work on this one because especially in the past year I did a lot of reflecting and uh, often I would complain that others don't help me and that others are not uh, like making sure that I'm okay basically Mm -hmm. but the issue is that I never tell them that I'm not okay and I never share uh, my issues or my problems so obviously (laughs) then they are not really taking care of me Uh, so yeah uh, this is something I need to work on because it causes me a lot of trouble yeah yeah and especially if you're dealing with another introvert it can be that you know yes yeah we are not really checking in (laughs) hey how are you today (laughs) and if we do usually the response is just like "Mm, fine yeah (laughs) that's it so yeah exactly this is I would say this might be tricky for most of the introverts. Next one is that architects believe that through willpower and intelligence, they can achieve even the most challenging of goals. And they derive much of their self-esteem from their knowledge and mental uh, acuity. And this is definitely true for me. I would say that I have pretty high self-esteem, but that's mainly because I feel kind of capable, I would say. Mm -hmm. And so I don't care as much uh, of how I look or what people think of me, because I personally think of myself that that I know things, I can do things, I can achieve something, and that's, that's it for me. So I don't care if, like, I have few kilograms over my ideal weight or something I just I just don't mind it's yeah. for me the main focus is on the knowledge and <laughs> on the brain I would say the next one which is not so pleasant to hear about myself uh, is that they may be cynical about human nature uh, more generally assuming that most people are lazy and imaginative or simply doomed to be <laughs> mediocre this 
I have to admit is very, very true for me. Especially in the past, I just couldn't understand like how can people settle for less, let's mm. in my own opinion, and how can they just live their lives doing nothing? Like it made no sense for me. Uh, but yeah, this this is something which I also when I expressed it this out loud, then people would be really not happy about me making these judgments about others lives so this is something which I also learned to more to be more accepting of others and that they are living their life and that that's okay I don't have to have opinion about it I I don't have to have I don't have to be right necessarily about everything (laughs) so Uh yeah, as I'm getting older, I'm definitely getting more accepting of others and trying not to judge them because also like, I don't know everything about their life. So this is the area of improvement for me. Mm-hmm. Then the architects are relying on a strategy rather than chance. Uh, they contemplate the strengths and weaknesses of each move before they make it. This is absolutely true and mm. I'm pretty proud of it. So... <laughs> And um, go with the flow does not really apply to you in your life. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, I, I don't even know what's the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you think that you have to, you know, make things happen and then they will yes, happen. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. yeah, and I was also raised this way that nothing comes for free. So mm. my parents basically made me even more <laughs> like this. So and it it doesn't necessarily mean I plan everything. It's just that I really make sure if it's the right move or not. Uh, I it doesn't have to be planned before. Mm. Uh I just really give it a thought before I do something or mm-hmm. make some move. Which also ties to the next one. They generally feel comfortable making decisions without asking for anyone else's input. And it also has the dark side <laughs> that this behavior can come across as insensitive as it fails to take into consideration other people's thoughts, desires and plans. Uh, yes. <laughs> but uh this is something which I kind of am um, conflicted about because on one hand like I want to make my own decisions and they are decisions about my life I don't usually make decisions so easily if they uh, include also other people I would definitely ask for their input but for myself I like to decide by myself I don't even usually ask for opinions at all I would say mm. I would much rather do some research <laughs> yeah. but yeah I did get this from other people quite often that basically I'm not thinking about them which is not not necessarily true I just don't I just don't want to change my life because of someone else's feelings which as I'm saying it out loud now does sound really insensitive (laughs) but uh, for example for me as someone uh, with very anxious mom I would not even probably do anything in my life if I would be uh, making sure that she's okay with what I do because she would expect me to just be safe at home and do nothing So I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing, but I can understand that some people might not like it <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the the personality of the other person. Like, for example, yes. for me, this is one of the main things why I love having you as a friend, because... <laughs> I'm not sure of my decisions and quite often like if I ask you what should I do it's not like you would tell me what to do I don't know I guess I appreciate your input but it makes some things easier between us because we're yes. not like taking each other's feelings too much into consideration <laughs> yeah and I can see how for you like for example if you if you're like witnessing some conversation between two sensitive feeling people you can be like how can these people like make such a big deal out of making a decision because they are oh uh Usually my first thought when I see uh, the feelers uh, discussing some decisions and it takes hours and hours and a lot of arguments. Why yes, why not? And what should we do? And 
like the whole process i'm usually like how do these people live like <laughs> how <laughs> because the majority of time they try to make a decision but they are not basing it on basically for me the reality like the facts and how it will my strategic mm-hmm. thinking always takes me like how it will influence other things how it will continue like how it will evolve in the future the decision i make now but they are more uh, focusing on the feelings of the moment so basically like i will just not do this because i'm tired or i'm moody today and i cannot relate to that because like if i have to do something i will do it i just don't want to really I don't focus on so much on how I feel necessarily. Uh, but coming back to what you said that you enjoy and you like hearing my input when you are telling me something, that's also something which I would like to say, like if I give someone advice when they ask for it, uh, for example, what you should do or what in my opinion would be the best move, I always do it with the best intentions, but also I don't really care what you will do in the end. Yeah. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter to me if you will do what I say. Like, I literally don't care. I just I just like to give my input because I think it might be helpful sometimes. But I just, I don't really mind you doing even the polar opposite of it. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be mad or I wouldn't tell you afterwards, like, see, it's your, like, I've told you otherwise, like, it's your fault. <laughs> It's uh, not necessarily, I don't think that my opinion has to be the only one, right? Um, But not everyone has to see it this way, which ties to the next point. (laughs) Because architects value through and depth uh, many common social practices uh, for small talk or white lies may seem pointless and downright stupid to them. And as a result, they may come across as rude or even offensive when they are just trying to be honest. And this has caused me a lot of troubles in my life because I know many people who considered me like straight up rude. And I do not consider myself being rude because I'm never trying to offense someone. But I've learned that I don't necessarily need to every time state my opinion. (laughs) So... If I'm giving advice, it's usually when people ask for it. Previously, I was doing it all the time when I've seen someone not doing something right in my eyes. But I've learned that basically, for example, if someone is sharing something they are happy about, I don't need to ruin it by saying to them that it's wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's very helpful. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. And yeah, I've try to kind of change this uh, thinking uh, that I want I need to be honest all the time in my head for many many years and at this point uh, it doesn't even usually come across to my mind trying to change the opinion or change the view of the person sometimes it does but <laughs> I don't say it out loud so normally these days I would say my opinion or my advice only if it's asked for and the one of the things that really helped me understand this was that al- always I would tell the people that when I'm saying something to them, like if I think they're doing something wrong or trying to make things right uh, for them, I'm doing it with good intentions. But here the quote that the way to the hell if paved with good intentions is the absolute truth. So I I had it to learn it the hard way that good intentions are not enough and people want others to be polite and to be nice to them and it's more important than trying to help someone or being honest i'm not sure if i'm completely okay with this but (laughs) i'm trying to understand and even for me like sometimes being nice is kind of hard and i have to do it Like, I have to really think about it. Like, this is the situation when I have to be nice because the other person is not feeling well and I have to make sure that they are feeling better. So I am being nice. Even though in my head, sometimes I'm thinking like, it's completely your fault. You did this. So why are you now sad? So yeah, this is something I have to really make sure not to be too honest. For the famous people, uh, for INTJs, uh, 
I listed out a few <laughs> real people and uh, more of the fictional characters because I find those more helpful, especially since for the real people, I don't really know them. So I don't know if I can relate. <laughs> uh, the first one is uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, which I, whom I listed because he came up uh, also in one of the other tests. Mm. So I found it interesting. Uh, then Michelle Obama, Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin, which I don't like weird list i would say but i mean it just it just proves that you are capable of like things dominating yeah. and ruling like millions of people so yeah i guess uh and then for the fictional characters uh i have listed out uh walter white from breaking bad uh tyven lannister from game of thrones jay gatsby from the great gatsby and also Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games and Moriarty for, from Sherlock Holmes. And it's interesting because all of these characters take a different part of the personality, I would say. For example, in Tywin Lannister, there is definitely the strategic thinking most of the time and also not taking, not really being aware of others' feelings and not really caring about them as like, he killed few people and <laughs> but then again for example for uh Jake Gatsby uh there is this whole determination to do stuff and become successful which he did and he thought that basically that would be the main reason why he then would deserve his love but he completely forgot about her feelings and maybe she wanted to be with them right from the beginning and didn't really care if he was wealthy or not. So yeah, like he definitely saw his value in the success and in trying to be worth for someone. Then uh, in Katniss, I would say that I can relate in the sense that she was going definitely against the rules and not trying to follow everything that was said. And she was very also very determined to do things, to train and <laughs> be good. So yeah, I can definitely relate in some of the ways, because I don't think that any of these characters would be purely just DJ <laughs> and taking all of the aspects of the personality. Now, moving on to my, to my, to the architect's <laughs> strengths and weaknesses. Uh, it's for... okay to say that they're your <laughs> Yeah. <Okay. laughs> so the first strength is being rational, which... I do see as a strength, but uh, usually people don't. <laughs> so no, I do. So yeah, I really appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the number two is being informed, which uh, I never would would have listed this as my strength, but I do consider myself being informed, not necessarily about everything uh, in my life, but I do try to be informed about let's say, current events or things that influence me directly. That's why sometimes people would come f come to me just for the information because they know that I would have read all of the articles and learn about all of the things. So they would just come to me, ask a simple question, and I would be able to like really in detail describe the whole thing <laughs> and provide them with all they need. So definitely I would say that is a strength. Uh, number three is independent, which uh, we have in a sense in yeah. common. But weirdly, you have you had it listed in your weaknesses. So yes, <laughs> that's definitely interesting. Uh, I would definitely consider it as a strength for me because uh, it just really helped me many times in my life, and it, for me, it came very natural to do things by myself. Mm. But I am trying to, in a sense, be less independent and try to ask for help and get more, get other people more involved in my life. <laughs> yeah, but it's something that I do really appreciate in you that, you know, you're capable of like living your life and I don't need to listen here you talking about like how, how difficult your life is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I... <laughs> I don't think uh, I ever complained like 
about the general life. Like I take care of things, like I do stuff and I don't feel like it's that difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, number four is uh, the termite, which yes, I guess uh, I agree, but I would, I never considered myself uh, so much the termite, but I guess I am <laughs> in a sense. It's more, the doubt comes more from like that I would expect all people to be determined about things they care about, but that's not always the truth. So, yeah, yeah. like sometimes other people take other people's uh, wants and needs more into consideration rather than their own. So, with their own things, they might not be as yeah. determined then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number five is curious, which I think we also had in common. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, some things uh, are similar, even though we are very much <laughs> opposite when it comes to this test. And number six is versatile, uh, which was uh, on the site described as love diving into all sorts of challenges and that uh, cur- curiosity and determination can help them succeed in different areas, which I think it's really, uh, what, it, it, that's really something that describes me that I uh, don't necessarily focus in just one area or one topic. I like challenges of all sorts. And I just generally enjoy challenges and changes and new things. It really is something that excites me. And usually people are worried because they know it will be hard and trying to accept the change for me. It's probably the most exciting time of my life when something is changing, Mm -hmm. especially, for example, related to work. So, yeah, I would say this is true for me. And for the weaknesses, not so... (laughs) For me, it's definitely harder to speak about the weaknesses. Uh, the, <laughs> the first one is being arrogant, <clears throat> which is which is not uh, nice to admit. But uh, as I previously already touched on this topic, I'm really, really trying to work on this. But sometimes it still happens especially if I'm not having a good day, if I'm tired or feeling just not well, I would slip into the old ways and then, yeah, then others are getting angry, so. Yeah, and I guess more it would be about like channeling your arrogance into confidence so that there is less of the like superiority. Yes, yeah vibe <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah i will mention this a little later <laughs> because that's also issue of mine uh, <laughs> uh the next weakness is uh dismissive of emotions this is absolutely true and uh for me this has became a huge issue that basically I wasn't thinking that my emotions are important and I was very suppressing them, putting them on some place else to not even to deal with them later. I would never just deal with them. I would just put them there. And this is something which uh, got me into therapy because <laughs> I had too many emotions <laughs> somewhere, keeping them down inside and not dealing with them. So I am very very actively working on this one because it causes real issues with my mental health also which was easier for me but I also had to work on not to dismiss emotions of others because since I was not considering my own to be important I also didn't consider others emotions to be important so previously especially in my early teenage years If, for example, with me being arrogant, I would make someone else angry, I wouldn't see it as an issue because I was just right. So I didn't care. Uh, And that's that's not really popular (laughs) in in any group of people. So yeah, this required hard work, but I I feel like I'm having it under control (laughs) in some way. Mm -hmm. The next one is being overly critical. (laughs) Yes, uh, I've heard this too many times. The most I've heard it from people who are close to me because I get more critical 
for those who I care about because I feel the need to tell them that something is wrong. Uh, but it's nothing compared to how I am critical to myself. Also another point that I'm working hard on and <laughs> it's really hard, but I, I have to. It's it, At this point, I don't like to make other people upset or angry. So it's something that I really, really genuinely want to uh, get better at. The next one was combative. Uh, which was described as hate blindly following without understanding why and can get caught up in arguing about useless rules and regulations, which distracts them from the important matters. Um, I wouldn't say I can relate to this as much uh, because this also mentioned that you would have issues with authorities. It was more relatable to me when I was a kid. I did have issues with teachers, even mm. though I was a great student and I had perfect uh grades i still would get home and be angry about the teachers because they are stupid and the rules make no sense and usually after school i would take about two to three hours just walking in the apartment from one side to the other just complaining and being angry about the teachers about the rules how things work but in the end in the school i wouldn't necessarily break the rules or do something bad i was just complaining about it mm. at this point i more or less just accept the situation if i'm not able to change it i wouldn't necessarily even think about it i would be like just yeah okay it doesn't make sense but it's fine yeah and the last one of the weaknesses is uh romantically clueless <laughs> which <sighs> i mean This is also tied up to uh, the issue with understanding and being more accepting of emotions and giving the value to emotions of myself and also others. And on the page, it was mentioned that basically, especially in the early stages of relationship, when you are supposed to be all in love and happy about everything, architects have no idea what they're supposed to do. And <laughs> this is just so right. Like... I don't know, like, how how am I supposed to be happy all the time? Like, my life doesn't necessarily change that much just because I'm in a new relationship. And I, and yeah, that's why uh, usually, not usually, always, <laughs> I have been uh, described as being cold, mm. which is not true. I just don't know how, don't know how to behave. <laughs> I just yeah. don't know. I don't know how it works. I have... Mm zero idea how to like show others my feelings so that I am happy and that I like them. I'm the person who shows this more through the acts, but not necessarily like telling them, hugging them or these kind of things. That's kind of hard for me. And I had to learn it just to do it so the other person knows. So just like really thinking about like, yes, I should hug this person now. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, but that's really interesting because I see it more of as a, like for me, sometimes I try to act like I don't care that much because it's like maybe more unexpected from a girl if you're trying to act like you're not that bothered or like obsessed with the guy that you have a crush on, for example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. It works before you get into the relationship okay. because it, it like many men find this really attractive that I'm not like all over them and like being crazy. <laughs> and they find it like they see behind it the confidence and that I feel like, yes, you should try to get me not me getting you. But since it doesn't change after we get into the relationship, <laughs> then they are not happy about it and they are not feeling confident afterwards. So, mm -hmm. yes. And this ties to the next uh, part, which was about the relationships. And I can completely relate. Uh, and I already mentioned it, that basically architects, as they mature, they gain experience and eventually come to understand the purpose of romantic rituals. And romantic that's, rituals. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically what I just mentioned, that I had to like really 
think about it and understand like, yes, this is important to do in the relationship and it is important to spend time together. It is important to show the other person that I want to spend time together and not just wait for them to ask me to go out. And at this point, like it really is hard for me, especially because I love to spend time alone and it's getting in the way in the relationship because sometimes I don't want to go out and I don't want to go on a date and I just don't want to see the other person even though I really deeply love them but <laughs> I I like to love them alone so <laughs> I need to I need to figure this out uh, but in the description it also mentioned that Sometimes architects may even decide that dating is too irrational and beneath them. And yeah, like sometimes my thoughts might slip this way. But in the end, I also, I I do enjoy being in love and I do enjoy having the close person. And for me, especially like the partner usually is someone who I'm the closest to. Like I reveal even the sides of me that I don't necessarily show to other people. It is important for me, but I don't really enjoy definitely the early stages of dating. What I just said directly ties to the next point, which is that architects care about depth and quality. They would rather have just a few good friends than a large circle of acquaintances. And this is, this couldn't be more true. Like I don't necessarily feel the need to be friends with everyone. I have just very few close friends and sometimes I cross people out of even this list so <laughs> so yeah I mean for those people like I really value them I really deeply care about them and I would do a lot of things for them <laughs> just to make them happy even though I don't seem always like this type of person <laughs> but I'm really trying to show this more but also uh, the description mentioned that the sharp wit and the dark humor of architects isn't everyone's cup of tea and they are okay with that that's true like I don't mind if someone doesn't like my humor or something but those people exist like many people don't even understand my kind of humor especially because usually I would use sarcasm and there are those people who just don't understand sarcasm at all yeah. so <laughs> those are not my friends <laughs> yeah I understand mm -hmm. so that's about uh, relationships and friendships and in the conclusion armed with powerful intellects and strategic minds architects can outmaneuver obstacles that seem unbeatable to most but their strengths when misunderstood can turn into weaknesses and keep them from reaching their full potential that's why I'm working hard on my weaknesses and trying to not get in the way of me becoming successful, but in a sense of like being happy, having good, good friends and in my like feeling good about my life. That's what I see as a success for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess it's like for both of us, it's good to have each other as friends because we are really complimenting on those things that we need to kind of work on. <laughs> yes. And I have to say, uh, I briefly mentioned it, but I have to say it again because it's really important for me <laughs> that you are one of the friends from whom I learned the most in a sense that you are really just by being yourself, you are teaching me to being more soft and being more caring and many many things that help me improve myself are coming from your example and just being your friend so I really appreciate this and it's really nice to have you in my life have your personality type in my life so I can see the example of doing things completely different and still it turning out to be good and that it can be also done right even different way than is mine thank you <laughs> <laughs> i thank you <laughs>
But again, I didn't say it with too much emotion. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like stating the facts. <laughs> yes. And this is what, like, this is how I function in my friendships and re relationships. Like, I say, I think I say super nice things, but I, I, I'm not able to say them with the emotion and with the warmth. It's yeah, but just to facts. be honest, like, it gives you, whatever you say, it gives you more credibility when you do say it. Like, you're not someone who's just like, oh, you look so good today, girl. Like, yeah, you're the best. Like, you're not that kind of a person, which sometimes you, I don't know if you need those people in your life, but for me, it can be very nice to have that kind of a cheerleader in my life. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I really appreciate it that when you actually do say something, then I... I fully believe you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and so you, of course, you know that I'm an ISFP, but do you know around you in your group of like family and friends, have you, do you know of other people who have done this test? Uh, yes, just a few, but for them, I don't know if they didn't spend so much time doing the test or if it's because uh, it was done in Slovak, yeah. but it doesn't fit. Like, for example, my mom should be the same type as you. And <laughs> nope. <laughs> She's warm, not at all. Like, never. <laughs> like, she hates hugs, for example. Like, I don't think she ever hugged me as a kid. So, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say that she would be the same and, type as yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> and you're telling me that she's, like, really anxious about many things. And I'm more yes. like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're happens, like kind of a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she is in this sense the opposite of you. Mm -hmm. So I it probably would be because of the language yeah. of the test, but unfortunately she's not able to take it in yeah. English. Uh, <laughs> that would be a very random <laughs> uh, result. And then also two other friends took it, but I wouldn't say it didn't make too much sense for me about them. Like mm -hmm. it, I don't think it uh, fit too well. But then again, like if someone is not so obsessed about personality tests, they don't need to take so much time while taking the test and like really... Oh, and also, of course, like if you're not so much in touch with yourself, you're not going to be honest on the test. So mm -hmm. your results will be reflection basically of who you want to be. And that's something which I feel might have happened with the few people I know that took this test. Mm -hmm. Okay. For me, what I think it's super interesting is that INCJs, they are not very common amongst women. Yeah. But still, mm, yes. despite this, I think out of six girlfriends that I've had make this test, there are four INCJs. Like, how do you have your happen? type? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoy like the yeah and sense and for approach. yeah and for those of you who don't have uh, all the knowledge about this test, uh, just for the reference of how rare uh, women are uh, in the INTJ, I think it was around one percent in the population. Yeah, that's really not a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like it's even like weird that you know so many <laughs> like that might be the whole group of INTJs for this region basically exactly <laughs> yeah and then I have like my like one of my best friends in Finland she's the complete opposite of me an ENTJ mm -hmm. which is also quite funny because even though mm -hmm. we are complete opposites it can still work and yeah. I really you know appreciate the qualities that she has as a person yes yeah uh, but I would say all in all this test what I really really enjoy about it is that it gives you the the different aspects the different dimensions like what is it actually measuring and then it uh, it gives you this profile this type that also explains more in depth yeah I also really like that it's uh, pretty complex and covering uh, a lot of areas of life uh, because you have we skipped few of the <laughs> pages for example yeah. uh the types as parents yeah. because since none of us is a parent i don't <laughs> think uh, we get to speak about this yeah. uh but also just to give you the idea for each of the categories for the relationships for uh the parenthood for the friendships for career for uh, being a leader i think uh there is a full page of 
description for the, uh, each of the types. And that's something what I really enjoyed because some of the some of the results are just like few words on the, that should describe your full personality. But <laughs> come on, like personalities are pretty complex things. Uh, but also what kind of feels weird for me is that this test basically suggests that you are this personality and that's it. Mm, yeah. And for me, as someone who is doing a lot of personal growth and have been doing it my whole life, it just doesn't feel right. Because for me, I have changed many of the points mentioned uh, in this or even or at least significantly improve. And then I'm not sure if I would, for example, in 10 years do the test again, I would get the same results. But it feels kind of strange because it, it seems like as if it was unchangeable basically yeah i mean i but everyone can improve yeah i suppose the i it's been such a long time since i took this test but i suppose the questions are formed in a way that those are kind of really tackling your like really the core of who you are and your what, what you value and so on so i'm guessing that or i hope that even if we are working on for example our weaknesses that it wouldn't really change who we are but it would change like it would make things easier like for example yeah uh, maybe I can start saving for retirement or something in the future like who knows maybe. it could happen <laughs> doesn't I mean that my so. personality <laughs> type would change it's just like yeah I'm learning how yeah, to deal yeah. with it yeah 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 and also especially coming from someone who's like, don't box me in. Like, we are so complex and, of course, it doesn't tell you everything about yourself, like what you get as your result. So, yes, yeah. definitely. But yeah, like, don't let it, don't let your type define you, but, like, I think it's okay to get some pleasure out of doing these tests, so. Yes, yeah, definitely. It's interesting to read. And I wanted to ask you if you did try to uh, look for your type. For example, I did join a Facebook group of INTJ females from all around the world. I don't recommend joining this group for, for any other type of personality <laughs> because it's... Uh, <laughs> Oh, we are not nice there. Like people are very honest, very to the point. If someone asks a question the f and it's not really related to anything or something, the people would be like, this is a stupid question. Yeah. Don't ask it, delete this post and so on. So it's not the most welcoming environment, but funny enough, like I enjoy seeing other people who think that way because obviously like I don't need to act like that all the time but I still would think it so it's nice to see that like I'm not the only rude person in this world and and yeah and that it's it's normal and it's fine but also I can see how people are getting there more open about their feelings and what they want and often the women there would share their insecurities or ask for help and they would get a lot of love and a lot of support but in the exact way that we need because like we can kind of connect and understand what the other one is asking for to hear mm -hmm. because we 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 don't necessarily search for the comfort of it will be okay it will be fine you can do it like that's really annoying for me like i know yeah. but <laughs> yeah i i i need the sometimes we would like to hear the input on basically what i would tell other person if they would be asking me like i need i need to hear it from someone similar so it's nice so i wanted to know if you did uh, join some group or somehow search for your type not at all i find it almost offensive that someone would have the same type as me <laughs> so <laughs> no Not at all, whatsoever. But I do, um, I'm subscribed to this YouTube channel. I think it's Frank, Frank James. I could be totally wrong. But if you search for like any kind of like 16 personalities, yeah, he makes videos like 16 personalities getting over a breakup, 16 personalities moving. Like, and I, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very, um, it's very, very entertaining. 
I would say. And sometimes it's like right on point. <laughs> like, for example, yes. 16 per personalities as moms <laughs> for me was something like, okay, kids, can you like, please take your argument outside? Mommy's trying to watch her show. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't need to necessarily deal with their argument. Like, just be independent and solve it yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I do enjoy that. So this is it for today's episode about personality tests. And we will continue in the part two, which will be covering three more personality tests. So see you there. Yeah, see you in that one. And if you want to see more of us, then you can go ahead and follow us on Instagram at myheartyourhead. Are you yawning? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep them in suspense. Suspension? Suspension is something that you can do like like a sexy thing, right? Like body suspension. Like, oh yeah, like when you put the, like, in your back you put the hooks oh, on the skin. Oh, yeah. Is it suspension? I don't know. Oh. And then the two other ones, those just kind of give you, like... <laughs> and the first one, uh, first... And the... F and the first... <laughs> the fuck do I say this? The first four ones. The four first... Okay, the first four. And the... <laughs> they prefer group... Best, group. They prefer group... Best. They prefer... <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> Do you want to yeah. say, basically? Okay. <laughs> I feel like I have to, like, put in the bloopers every time you take a sip of them. That will be the whole bloopers, just me drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I feel like the bloopers might be the majority of this episode. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs>